Hello and welcome to Exotic Gardening. The Aeonium's are nice and plump. They've been in the greenhouse all winter and now it's time to get them out. Now these Aeoniums I've just put behind the garage. It's somewhere very sheltered and it's pretty shady and these will allow the plants to acclimatise to the conditions of being outside. They're not in the best condition because they've been in the greenhouse all winter and in the winter in the greenhouse obviously they've not had enough light really. They've tried to grow because they do grow a lot or try to grow a lot in the winter months. They've not really had any soil, they've not been watered directly, but they will have had a bit of splash from other plants that I've watered. So they're not looking great, but I don't want them to look any worse, so I'm not going to put them in direct sun. But even at this time of year, they will bleach the leaves and damage them. So they're going to stay here behind the, the garage for a week, and then next weekend, they will be planted out in the garden. And I've got some other plants here as well. So I've emptied the greenhouse of pretty much everything apart from the onset bananas that we're starting off in the seed trays. So here we've got the, the parlor palm, we've got Musa sicamensis, we've got Brugmansias behind, we've got Begonia luxuriens, Swiss cheese plant that's been eaten by slugs and snails it looks like. And these are just getting some fresh air basically because it's a nice day. Yes there's a bit of a breeze, it's nice and sheltered here, they're not in full sun, it's nice them to harden off a little bit, get used to being outside because the nighttime temperatures are still too low for these sort of plants at the moment. They're going to go back in the greenhouse tonight and as the days go on we get warmer nights and they can stay out longer and then stay out overnight before eventually in mid to late May be planted out. Now earlier today I've uncovered the arid bed now I can see all the plants in this main arid bed, which are mainly the agaves at the front. We've got the Bayer Amata here, just beside me. And we've also got a Yucca Estrata, this huge one here, and small Yucca Estratas down there. And it's great to see how they've come through this winter. So the polycarbonate has done a great job of keeping these pretty dry, and it's been a mild winter as well, so there's no damage really on these. So the agave montana, which are hardy anyway, not a blemish on these, got a nice big chunky one here, amazing red margins, these teeth on each of the leaves and the patterns from the previous leaves on the outer leaves here. Got a smaller one at the front, again no marks on that whatsoever, damage marks. Just round the side we've got the agave americana and this has come through its winter the best it possibly has it's got no marks in the center no rot at all yes we do have some blemishes on the outer leaves but the center looks great and it's nice and chunky now and this can get to be a really big plant in ideal locations this would easily fill this whole bed and if we get a run of mild winters then this might take over this area over on this side, we've got the agave lofanfa. Not one usually seen planted out, but I've grown it from a very small plant. Planted out four or five years ago now. And this is looking better than ever. Not a single mark on this. But there's beautiful striations on the leaves. And again, these red teeth on the leaf margins. And this is a good 50 centimeters across. And it's grown that big from a small plant in five years beautiful plant. And then one of my favourite palms is the Mexican fan palm, Braya Amata. These wonderful 
silvery blue leaves that just get better and better as the season progresses. And looking into the centre, there's no sign of rot at all, although it's a bit too early to be 100% certain. Those pounds can have spear pull right all the way through to June. But hopefully, fingers crossed, this doesn't look like it's been damaged at all. So really pleased now that I've uncovered this bed and it's ready to grow and show itself off for summer. Now although the arid bed here and the agaves especially have done really well this winter, that can't be said for the aloes. Unfortunately my beautiful aloe polyphylla looks to have rotted away. There's a small chance it might make it but I think that's pretty much done for really, which is such a shame as it's pretty much at flowering size now and it's been planted out for four years. The aloe aristata, which are said to be the hardy aloes, again, they're on the edge. There's four planted out last year, and it looks like three of them at least have rotted away. So fingers crossed the fourth one makes it. One good, one good bit of news is the aloe striatula, although it's got the new name, not truly an aloe. That has come through unscathed and I've got dozens of plants around the garden, so that's good. So it does show you, even though we've had a mild winter, we've had so much moisture in the air, so much rain, that some plants have really struggled and the aloes seem to have suffered the most this year. But all is not lost. I can grow aloe polyphylla again from seed and I can pick up aloe astrata from many places. Now in here, I've got three parts to the mix that I'm going to use to sow most of my seeds. I've got some perlite, which is great for drainage. I've got some peat-free multi-purpose compost. And I've also got some John Innes seed sowing compost, which I know is not peat-free, but due to the extreme circumstances that we're living in at the moment, I couldn't get any more peat-free seed sowing compost. And I'm just going to mix these all together. So I've got perlite for the drainage, I've got the multi-purpose compost that holds on to some moisture, and the seed sowing John Innins compost, which is very sandy, has a little bit of fertiliser, but only a little bit, just to start the seeds off for two or three weeks. So I'm mixing that all together. I'm going to use various different trays and pots. So I've got full-size seed trays for some of the fine seeds that I'll be later transplanting into individual pots. I've got individual cells and little pots for seeds that don't like root disturbance and will stay in those pots for quite a long time before they get planted out or potted on. And the seeds that we're sowing today, it's quite a lot. So we're going to be sowing the riciness so we've got two types of riciness, and these grow really large, really quickly, have really dramatic palmate foliage for summer and autumn. And we've got the, the red version, and we've got the green version. These will go in individual pots. We've got zinnias, I love zinnias, really nice, exotic looking daisy-like flowers in bright colours. So this year I'm growing Zinnia Benares Giant Mix, so all sorts of colours and really large zinnias. We've also got Zinnia Sombrero, so they're smaller, they're bright scarlet red with yellow tips to each of the petals. We've got some nice colourful sunflowers that will go in individual pots as well. We've also got two types of Amaranthus. We've got Amaranthus Green Thumb, which is a green Amaranthus. So large tassels of green flowers. And we've also got Amaranthus Opio, which is a, another nice purpley Amaranthus. So all these I'm going to sow today. And because the weather's so nice, they should germinate pretty quickly because we're set now for the next week or two of decent warm days and no cold nights, which is fantastic so early on in the season. So I'm just going to fill my trays, fill my pots, and then I'm going to sow my seeds. So for the sunflower seeds, we're going to put two seeds in each pot 
and we're going to cover that with about a centimeter, centimeter and a half of compost. And then these will be nice tall plants for the back of the barda. And we've got lots of seeds, so we're going to fill up lots and lots of pots. Right, I've now moved into the garage and I'm going to sow some of the ricinus seeds. And I've got two types. We've got the ricinus New Zealand purple, so they're the red purple ones, the nice purple leaves. And I've also got the Zanzibarensis, which are mixed ones. These are all different ones. They're mainly green, some are greeny blue, and some are purple as well. These are the absolutely huge leaves, massive leaves. And I'm not letting my children sow these, not letting my toddler touch these seeds because they are poisonous. So that's why I'm doing these not in the garden. And they are pretty big seeds. So if we just take a look, just pass them out in my hand. The mixed ones, because they're from different types, you've got some huge seeds like ladybirds and you've got some smaller darker seeds as well. These are quite they're quite hungry plants so they're going to go in individual pots. I'm reusing all my plastic pots, I've not bought any for a couple of years now so they're mainly sort of eight to ten centimetre pots and they're going to have one seed in each and then I'm just going to use multi-purpose compost, some nice lovely multi-purpose compost, really good quality stuff here and one seed in each pot. So I'll just pick one like this, it's a nice big one. Pop that in, go down a couple of centimetres, just put the compost over the top, press it down, give that a good water, and ideally that needs to go on a heat mat or propagator. And these are gonna go into the greenhouse as well, because they wanna be nice and warm to germinate. And they do want to get going, grow really quickly. So that's why I've not sown these early on in the season. And they'll stay in these pots until they get planted out in about a month or so of time. So I've got my amaranthus seeds sowed in these little modular cells. I've got my zinnia sombreros in there. And over there, we've got the two types of ricinus. And ideally, they'd be in the propagator above. But if we look in the propagator, we'll see what we've got are the Sullenstormen cuttings that we took last autumn. And just three or four days ago, these were looking really sorry for themselves. They just about clinged on to life over winter. And what I've done is I've just taken them out and put them into a little bit bigger modules and individual pots and they've come on quite well in just the last three or four days. Now the smaller ones, they'll be fine in the smaller pots for now. And these larger ones over here, you can see they've got quite long stems. And if I wanted, if I wanted more plants, I can just cut down here and make more plants by just propagating these top bits and letting the rooted smaller lower parts carry on growing in the pots but as it is I think I've got enough plants for this season well thank you for watching exotic gardening We've certainly got a lot of jobs done this weekend hope you have too thanks for watching